Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video, we're going to be recapping the whole story of the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. So we'll be going back and taking a look at all the locations, gameplay mechanics, and backstories of all the characters. And as always, I will just state that everything stated in this video isn't linked to the overall lore and universe of FNAF. It's just a fun, creepy, cool story we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy. And lastly, do be sure to subscribe to GameTube as it helps out a lot, and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps up with all the videos that we post. Alrighty, well, let's revisit the story of the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. So our story takes place at the Freddy Fazbear Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. This was a bug-themed children's entertainment restaurant with multiple different attractions and characters. The multiple characters of the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria have been involved in a number of unfortunate incidents. None of these incidents have been made public until now. So our first character is Bella B. Bella was a Bumblebee themed animatronic. She was given a bright yellow colour scheme with the famous black stripes and black coloured limbs. Bella had pink eyes just like another famous character in the series. Bella was also given thin translucent plastic wings on her back. So Bella's role up on stage was that of the Maraca player. She would play them up on stage with all the other band members as they sung their jolly tunes. Bella's Maracas were a hand-me-down from one of the older establishments. They used to belong to another character, but Bella now inherited the old pair of Rattlers. Bella actually shared similar traits to the original Fazbear Pizzeria character, Chica. More specifically, Chica's obsession with food. So, being a bumblebee, Bella had an obsession with candy and other sweet treats. Here and there, the employees had spotted Bella rummaging through the candy and shoveling handfuls of it in their mouth. The employees would often try to catch Bella in the supply room, but they didn't have much luck. Bella would always be able to hide at the right time. So, some time ago, Bella used to be accompanied by a little supporting character. This character was called Honeycomb. A cute little honeycomb character that Bella used to carry around on a tray and present to all the birthday guests. But one day, Honeycomb disappeared. Ever since that day, Bella looked worse for wear. It was later revealed when the repair worker opened up Bella's chest compartment that she in fact ate Honeycomb. Ever since the manager locked the candy storage room, she got so hungry she actually devoured her little friend. So, Bella wasn't the only one who had a sweet tooth at the pizzeria. The night guard would also sneak a couple of treats for themselves as they would start their night shift. Since that was the only candy that Bella could get her hands on, she would do anything in her power to get it. So throughout the night, Bella would attempt to enter the security office and grab the candy. The player would have to do their best to fend off her multiple attempts. But if Bella proved to be too much for the player, then it would end in a classic FNAF jump scare. So for our next character, we have Roy the Rhino Beetle. Roy was of course designed after the large, heavily armoured Rhinoceros Beetle. These beetles are famous for their large rhino-like horn protruding out of their head. Their body was much larger and bulkier than any of the other insect characters. Roy was given a bright purple colour scheme. Their chest however was a dark grey colour to break up the contrast of all the purple. So like all the other signature Fazbear animatronics, they have a large jaw and rounded teeth. And just like the famous big old bear, Roy was the main character at the Insect Kingdom. Roy's role up on stage was that of the main singer. They were definitely a crowd favourite amongst all the guests. So overall, Roy was considered to be a lovable and goofy character. That was until they experienced an unfortunate event. So whilst Roy looked like a big old friendly bug, they also had a strange and somewhat sinister side to them as well. So over night time when all the employees would leave, that's when Roy would show their sneaky side. The manager and the security guard have both reported that Roy would act strange in their free roam setting. The manager would always see Bella roaming around looking to get her grubby hands on whatever little candy she could find. But when it came to Roy, they were much more elusive and sneaky. 
they always stuck to the shadows. It was almost like they didn't want anyone to see them. So on one unfortunate night, Roy would experience a scenario he didn't want to find himself in. So Roy as a character was well known by his rhino beetle horn sticking out of his head. Many young guests would try to grab onto it and swing off it. And the adults would try to open their bottles on Roy's horn, and as a joke, they would hang their jackets and hats on his horns. That didn't bother Roy all that much. During the day, he had to be on his best behaviour and make sure all the guests were having a good time. But if anyone were to try and disrespect Roy at night time, then it would be a different story entirely. So one afternoon when the pizzeria was closing up for the day, the manager set Roy and all the other characters into their stationary mode. Roy and the others were scheduled for maintenance the next day, and the manager didn't want them walking off and getting any wear and tear before they got worked on. A few hours later, as Roy stood there in their frozen state, they heard a loud crash. It was a bunch of older children who had broken into the pizzeria. They were all wearing Fazbear character masks. All except one younger looking kid. The other kids seemed to be bullying the younger kid. They carried them over to Roy and hung the poor child by the back of their shirt on Roy's horn. Roy, stuck in his stationary state, couldn't do a thing. The only one who could help was the damn security guard. But on a night like this, they were too busy slacking off. The bullies all stood there and laughed at the poor embarrassed child. They sprayed Roy and the child with soda and threw multiple food items at the kid. All this food and sticky soda stained and dirtied Roy's outer material. This whole ordeal really upset Roy. He was designed to entertain children, not to be a tool to torment and bully them. Eventually the security guard caught on to what was happening. They shone their flashlight at them and they all scattered leaving the poor child to hang off Roy's horn. The guard helped them off and called their parents and the police. Roy was angry at the security guard, why didn't they help sooner? Along with that, Roy was also very embarrassed. From that day on, Roy didn't want to be seen by anyone. They would hide in the shadows and avoid the cameras at all costs. If anyone, especially that lazy security guard, looked at them through the cameras, then they would teach them a lesson. So throughout the night, Roy would avoid the security cameras. If the player was to accidentally look at them on the monitors, then this would trigger Roy to start walking over to the office. Roy would taunt the player all through the night and also even toy with them. He would peer into the room and then run off and hide. The player would have to do their best to locate where Roy was at all times. If they lost sight of him, things wouldn't end well for the player. Next up is our third insect character. And this character is Alex the Ant. Alex was the ant character of the Bug Buddies band. The engineers gave Alex a friendly appearance with a big toothy smile. Alex was given a bright blue colour scheme with some subtle design differences. They had two antenna just like Bella, but these antenna were made of a stronger material. Their forearms also had four little spikes slash hairs on either side. Alex's eyes were eerily similar to yet another classic Fazbear Entertainment character. So for Alex's role up on stage, he was the main guitarist. He would play the electric guitar up on stage next to Bella and Roy. So over night time, Alex has always been the most active animatronic. When all the characters were set into their free room setting, Alex would always be the one to start moving immediately. The security guard would often report hearing a strange sound coming from Alex. Whenever they were roaming around, they could hear it in the distance. It was definitely a strange and off-putting sound. But the manager assured the security guard that it was just a fault in their voice box. The manager arranged for the repair worker to come in and check up on Alex in the next few days. When it was time to inspect and repair the voice box, the repair worker first removed their eyes and placed them in the cleaning receptacles. They then removed their jaw cover plate. This gave them access to the latch that opens their chest compartment. When the repair worker went to take a look at their damaged voice box, they soon discovered that they didn't have a voice box at all. 
How on earth are they making that strange sound? All of a sudden, they heard a loud grinding noise. The cleaning machines have shredded Alex's eyes into pieces. In a fit of rage, Alex attacked the worker. The establishment didn't have any replacement eyes for them. So they ordered the new eyes and they'd arrive in a couple of weeks. But Alex couldn't wait that long. They searched everywhere for the spare set of eyes. But the only place they haven't looked yet was the security office. So they would attempt to enter the office as soon as it hit 12am. They were the first character to start moving of a night time. The way in which Alex would try to enter would be through the vents. When the player sees them, they would need to scare them off with the inbuilt vent fire extinguishers. Alex would try to enter the room numerous times throughout the night. If the player slips up and lets them inside the room, then it would be the last thing they ever do. We now come to the fourth character at the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. And this character is Melvin Mantis. Melvin was modelled after the Praying Mantis. The Praying Mantis is most famous for their large claws and eyes. The engineers went with a green colour scheme with a touch of yellowy green as well. Melvin's claws were quite unique. They were one of the only Freddy Fazbear animatronics to have such extravagant and interesting limbs. Underneath the soft material padding lay their sharp metallic endoskeleton. Melvin's endo in particular was quite sharp and dangerous. But fortunately, the extra strong material covering them would be quite hard to rip. So Melvin didn't perform on stage like the other characters. They instead had their own sectioned off area. And this section was Melvin's Magic Garden. This was a play area that was made to look like a cartoonish garden. There would be plenty of fun characters for all the children to look at and enjoy. But the main character in the Magic Garden was of course Melvin. The garden was popular amongst the younger guests and sold a fair amount of merch. So overall, Melvin was considered to be quite the trouble-free character. That was until the pizzeria found out about Melvin's strange obsession. Every night when the characters were put into their free roam setting, Melvin always chose to spend their time in the Magic Garden. Night after night, they chipped away at a specific wall. The other characters didn't know why they were doing this. It didn't make any sense. It was almost like something was calling out to them. But as the nights went on, Melvin kept digging and digging, and the hole in the wall got bigger and bigger. When they were almost through, they dug as hard as they could. They managed to wear off all their material skin and revealed their metal arms and legs. Just as they were about to finally break through, the night guard managed to sneak up behind them and hit their emergency stop button. From that night on, Melvin knew they were never going to get through this wall with the night guard still in the picture. So Melvin would wait patiently behind the out of order curtain and pick the perfect time to strike. The security guard would have to keep an eye on Melvin as they slowly emerge from their spot. If the player doesn't see Melvin anymore or hears them running, they need to close the door immediately. But if the guard were caught up with all the other characters and forgot about Melvin, then it would most definitely be the end of them. Next up is the strange looking character, the Spider Puppet. So at this point in the Insect Kingdom's timeline, they were running short on funds to design a brand new character. The establishment had a spider character in mind, but couldn't afford to build one from scratch. So instead, they requested if Fazbear Entertainment could send them an older out-of-use animatronic that they could modify. The company agreed and sent them an old marionette model. The pizzeria got to work and made it look as spider-like as best they could and the finished product was the Spider Puppet. The Spider Puppet's role the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria was that of the face painter. With their four arms, they could paint the faces of four individual guests at one time. Although the Spider Puppet was a little creepy looking, they were successful nonetheless. The only strange thing about the Spider Puppet was their obsession with catching and eating cockroaches. Once they ran out of bugs to catch, they made their way to the security office. 
As they got closer, the night guard lost all control of their instruments. The spider puppet's eyes also disappeared as they peered into the office. The night guard was surely doomed, but as the spider puppet went to attack, the clock struck six. The spider puppet froze and then left the room. The night guard was fortunately spared for the time being. They realised that they couldn't let the spider puppet run out of bugs to catch. So the security guard gathered up all the roaches they could and loaded them into a device they made. So now at the press of a button, they could deploy a roach into the spider box and keep them at bay. The player would need to pay attention to the indicator on their console and make sure there was always a roach to keep them satisfied. But the player had to be careful as not to run out of roaches. If they did, there was nothing else they could do about the spider puppet entering the office. We now come to our sixth character. And this character was known as Gary the Grasshopper. And after their incident, they were known as the Gary Mangle. So this character actually takes place back in time before Melvin Mantis and the Spider Puppa were introduced. So before Melvin Mantis, there was Gary Grasshopper. Gary was an animatronic that was designed to serve the guests. So they would bring food to the guest tables and also sing for their birthday guests as well. But when it came to after hours, they were actually quite the loner. They didn't spend much time with the other animatronics. Gary much preferred the company of the spare endoskeletons in the repair room. Whilst wandering around the repair room, they came across a strange looking endoskull. Gary was obsessed with this endoskull. It was almost like it was trying to talk to them. Eventually, the skull convinced Gary to try and add them to their body. Gary made multiple attempts, but nothing seemed to work. That was until the skull's eyes lit up and they took control of the other endos. With their help, they were finally able to make Gary and the skull whole. When the manager found them in the morning, they couldn't believe what had happened. There was no way they were going to be able to put them back together again. And if Fazbear Entertainment ever found out about this mangled mess, they would surely be fired. So fortunately for the manager, the magic garden was being built at the same time. So they decided to power them down and hide them in behind the wall. The builders built over the mangled animatronic and they were never seen again. That was until some years later when the skull woke up and called out to Melvin. They wanted Melvin to free them from the wall. In the end, Melvin was able to loosen up the wall enough for them to finally break out. When they were free, they seeked vengeance on all the staff members that locked them away. Unfortunately, the manager didn't work here anymore. So the next best thing was the night guard. So throughout the night, they would make multiple attempts to enter through the doors and vents. If the player let Gary and the Skull get the best of them, it wouldn't end well. We now come to our final character at the Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. And this character is Rodney Roach. Rodney was modelled after the troublesome cockroach. Considering roaches were quite a disliked insect, the engineers did a pretty decent job of making them look friendly and cute. So, Rodney was the shortest character at the pizzeria. And despite all the other characters trying to harm the player, Rodney was a non-threatening character. So their role at the pizzeria was to distribute balloons to all the children. Considering Rodney was the same size as many of the children, they took a liking to the lovable roach. But aside from all the happy smiles, Rodney was quite the prankster. They played multiple different pranks on all the different characters. But their favourite person to prank was, of course, the night guard. So throughout the night, the player would need to keep an eye out for Rodney. All that Rodney wanted was the night guard's attention. So whenever they heard the sound of laughter, they would need to look at Rodney. If they looked away or missed the opportunity, that's when Rodney would start to prank them. They would float balloons in front of the cameras, leave toys under the door, and
mind literally gum up the spider puppet button. Although these were harmless pranks, they would also land the Night Guard in a world of trouble. Thanks to Rodney's pranks, this would leave them open to an attack from all the other characters. Alrighty, well that's all we have for the story of The Insect Kingdom Pizzeria. Let us know in the comment section down below which character was your favourite from this chapter. Alrighty everyone, well until the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.